This is the Triton 500 from Acer and you'll be surprised how much this thing packs given its slim and lightweight chassis. The laptop is nothing out of the ordinary when it comes to design and there's a touch of gaming thrown in here and there, but given this look the laptop is less flashy and perhaps more usable even in formal conditions. Looking around you find a nice array of ports on this thing. The left side houses the power input, an ethernet port, a type A USB port, an HDMI port as well as separate microphone and headphone inputs, something a true gaming enthusiast will definitely appreciate. There's also two more type A USB ports on the right, a type B USB port which is kind of unnecessary given today's day and age, and a type C USB 3.1 gen 2 port supporting things like Thunderbolt 3 and 10 gigabit speed transfers. We would have liked to see an additional fingerprint sensor on here which could have been a nice touch for security purposes. During my usage, I also use the Type-C USB port on the laptop to expand on its port selection and give it an SD card reader which is important for my daily workflow. But wired connections aside, the machine's Wi-Fi 802.11 AC support and Bluetooth 5.0 are pretty nice to have. For me, this resulted in a boost in Wi-Fi connectivity and that might be due to Acer's Killer Double Shot Pro software. And it stood out because I've used a lot of laptops in the past which gave me reception problems given my router placement at home. Now speaking of home, this phase of our life entails a lot of working from home, and as such you'll rely a lot on the web camera on the machine. I wouldn't say the camera on this thing is bad when you give it enough light, although I wish the resolution was better. Plus this being a gaming laptop, the web camera if good in terms of quality could actually come in handy for live streaming. So let's focus on some of the gaming aspects of the device. First up, the display. It sports a 144Hz refresh rate with a 3 millisecond response time and a respectable 81.3% screen to body ratio. For gaming, this is really helpful, but from a multimedia perspective, it's not bad either. The IPS style panel has anti glare properties, which helps reduce reflection, although the screen's contrast levels are on the lower end. You'll perhaps lose out on minute details in dark scenes, but it isn't much of a deal breaker by any means. As for the insides, you get the Intel Core i7 97. 50H processor at 2.6 GHz. It's not the latest 10th generation processor but still packs plenty of power coupled with 16 GB of DDR4 memory and 1 TB of storage on our review unit. When in use, I found the 16 GB of memory to be a bit of a bottleneck when you're running multiple Chrome tabs and Windows and have things like games or editing software running in the background. You'll probably see a few force closes here and there but that's about it. But more so, the storage on this thing can hold you back. In this day and age, good games easily come close to 70 to 80 gigabytes and with your personal files thrown in there 512 gigabytes of storage could run you down fairly quick so if you're not into external or cloud storage solutions going for the one terabyte option might be a good choice but you'd have to be conservative that way too of course you get nvidia's rtx 2070 max q gpu on this thing with 8 gigabytes of dedicated vram and this is good enough for a huge variety of gaming experiences and the titles we ran on it suffered absolutely no problems even demanding games remained above the 60 FPS mark at full settings, but keep in mind this is at full HD plus resolution. More so to enjoy these games at the full 144 FPS and truly take advantage of that refresh rate on the display, you're gonna need to tone down the settings a bit, but to be honest that's not a big deal. Plus these days true gaming enthusiasts tend to lower settings down anyway to get more performance out of their machines in competitive scenarios. Something we will say though is use headphones because the inbuilt speakers are quite weak and the fans ramp up a lot when gaming, although the laptop itself stays relatively cool. To be honest, you could even get by using the laptop's keyboard for gaming. It's satisfying with Acer's Predator Sense technology, its keys can be customized as much as you like in three zones as well. Maybe a few programmable keys and a volume slider could have helped further but that really doesn't matter. But I wouldn't use the laptop's trackpad to game. It's tactile for daily use but inconsistent towards the top, which takes a while to get used to especially if you're coming from a more premium offering like Apple's MacBook series. We think battery life on this thing is also not the most reliable, giving you about 3 hours of mixed usage but let's face it, the laptop isn't meant to deliver great battery life anyway. But that's about it for Acer's Triton 500. This year the machine has seen an upgrade to internals with Intel's 10th generation processors and newer Nvidia Super GPUs, but we're yet to test the performance differences between them. If you can find yourself a deal on this particular machine though, it could definitely be a viable option. As always, let us know what you think about the Triton 500 in the comments down below and make sure to like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching, this was Vabhav and I'll see you in the next one. Adios!